Over the course of the last couple of years, YouTubers like myself have been trying our best to debunk the transphobic talking points that we're seeing from politicians and podcast hosts. The problem is that our reach is very limited. So unless people are able to combat the vitriol with facts and arguments, unless they know how to respond to these transphobic talking points that they're hearing, well, things are just going to continue to deteriorate in this country. So it felt like we were fighting this losing battle where the people who are saying these terrible things, they have a bigger reach than the people who are debunking these terrible things that they're saying. So how do you compete with that? Well, the answer is you do your best, but at, at the end of the day, understand that it's an uphill battle. But now I am pleased to report that the cavalry has arrived because people with very large platforms, television shows, are finally saying what we've all been saying now for years. And it's really a positive thing to see. This is the hopium that I needed because when it comes to issues related to the LGBTQ plus community, especially trans issues, it really was hard to not feel defeated and depressed. But both Jon Stewart and John Oliver used their massive platforms to thoroughly and powerfully debunk transphobic arguments that have gotten a lot of steam. Now, unfortunately, I can't play large portions of their clips. So what I want to advise you to do, stop watching this video right now. Yes, you heard that correct. Stop watching this. Go to the description section and click on these links and watch them for yourselves because they really are so incredible that I can't put it into words just how effective these are going to be. But if you don't want to see what they say yet, if you're not convinced, I've got a couple of clips. They're very short because I don't know uh, whether or not Apple TV is going to come after me for playing them. But first, let's look at John Oliver's recent segment published to YouTube on Sunday evening. People like Gnome love stoking fear over the specter of trans athletes, girls specifically, having an unfair advantage and taking away scholarship opportunities. But there are vanishingly few examples nationwide of trans athletes attempting to compete at all. And in Gnome State specifically, the head of their high school sports association could name exactly one transgender female athlete who competed and who graduated several years ago. So there are more athletes in this shot from Gnome's ad than there are trans girls known to have competed in South Dakota schools. But even if there were more, discriminating against them would still obviously be wrong. And it would still be weird that state legislatures were getting involved in decisions that are usually made by organizations governing the sports in question. And it is worth knowing, even at the elite level, conversations around this aren't being handled with flat out bans. The IOC has announced that it will set rules on a sport by sport basis but working on the general principle that no athlete should be excluded from competition on the assumption of an advantage due to their gender. And it is pretty remarkable that a trans athlete could theoretically compete in the Olympics, but not in South Dakota under 12 soccer. Now, he goes on to explain how these right wing politicians, they not only have no facts on their side, but the examples that they're using to gin up transphobic hysteria, it's it's bizarre. If you look at the details, Christy Nome is a governor who has kind of championed herself as a protector of girls sports because she banned trans high schoolers from participating in, in school sports. The problem is there's no known transgender athletes and a blanket ban, as she explains later on, is something that isn't just mean. But it also doesn't really make sense because you have other commissions like the Olympics, for example, they decide what is and isn't fair on a case by case basis, which is the way that it should be when it comes to sports. Blanket blanket bans don't defend women's sports. They only hurt trans people and stop them par from participating. But it really is a good example because it shows you that these politicians have nothing they don't have an economic message. All that they have is fear mongering and hysteria. And even the examples that they use protecting women's sports are founded on nothing. Now, Jon Stewart makes the same type of argument, you know, throughout the course of his, uh, I think it's like 30 minute episode on his Apple TV show, The Problem with Jon Stewart. And his episode, I've got to say, it's one of the most powerful repudiations of transphobia that I think I've ever seen. It's the most influential and effective thing that I've ever seen. Like watching it was honestly shocking to see somebody 
with a giant platform make these uh, make this uh, argument make this case so i'm going to play a short clip from his exchange with leslie rutledge this is the attorney general of arkansas she at her state passed legislation that bans gender affirming care for trans youth and he's going to explain why what they did is nonsensical and so if your child is suffering from pediatric cancer and the state comes in and says to you they recommend chemotherapy but we're not going to let you do that. You can't. We think you should get a different opinion. And here's the organization we think you should get the opinion from. They're not the mainstream, but they're an organization. So that's how you that's who you have to be treated by. Does that sound like something you would Well, accept? I think that's a very extreme example. That's not at all in line with what we're talking about. Now what he said there is not going to be revolutionary if you've watched this show because many YouTubers have made that same argument. But the problem is, as I stated at the beginning of this video, many people haven't heard this argument. They haven't thought through these things and how preposterous these bans on gender affirming care are. So when it comes to treatment of children, when it comes to cancer, for example, the state without question, follows the consensus of medical experts when it comes to how to treat those children. But when it comes to gender-affirming care for trans youth, they're disregarding what the experts are saying completely. And instead, they're superimposing what they believe is the thing that should be done, which is ban any type of care, even social transition for trans youth. And that is deadly. John Stewart challenges her on this, and she brings up bogus statistics. For, for example, she talks about how if you deny gender-affirming care, and I'm paraphrasing, by the way, deny gender-affirming care, and you give those trans kids counseling, then 98% of them end up not having gender dysphoria. Now, he calls her out because she just made that number up, and he, he says that as well. So this exchange here is so powerful because it proves beyond a shadow of a doubt that the transphobes who want to try to erase trans people from society, especially trans children, they have no argument, they have no data, statistics, and they don't have ethics on their side. It's lose, lose, lose for them. We just need people to see this. Now, I don't think that transphobes are going to watch this because they are inherently closed-minded, hence the reason why they're transphobes. Usually, if you're a bigot, you're not a very open-minded person. But if you are somebody who has come to this channel, I've seen you, you've commented, and you just don't agree about all of this gender extremism. I dare you, watch these segments. If you don't want to watch both, watch Jon Stewart's segment and try to formulate some sort of a rebuttal to it. It's very difficult to do. Because again, this is not an argument that he's making based on emotions. It's based on facts and reality and data and empirical evidence. That's why it's so powerful. So the reason why I want to talk about this is because a lot of the segments that I've done lately on trans issues have been very defeatist sounding probably. And I don't want to, I guess I don't want to like black pill people and make them not fight. I mean, trans people don't have a choice, but really I want to let people know that it's not a foregone conclusion, you know, we're in this bad state right now, but things can change. And this is a huge shift in momentum in our direction because now, for the first time, all of the arguments that you've been making are now echoed by massive, massive media figures with very large platforms. So what I want people to do, what I want to encourage you all to do is watch these segments, memorize the arguments that they're making, and use them when you're talking about trans rights to your transphobic family member. Use these arguments. This is why we talk about these things. I want you to use the talking points and use the data that I present to you on this program because a lot of people, even Democrats, liberals, they don't necessarily know how to respond to transphobic arguments, so they just kind of choose to step back. But we need people engaged. We need every single person to stand up for trans people because they are under assault right now in this country, and we need all hands on deck. And so what John Stewart and John Oliver just did is give us a massive, massive point of reference to point to. Nobody's going to watch a video from the Humanist Report or Lands from the Serfs because they don't know who we are. We're just YouTubers. We could be anyone. But they know who Jon Stewart is. They know who John Oliver is. And even if they may not agree with them ideologically, they at least know that the presentations that they have 
will be packed with facts and data. It's hard to argue against that. So use them as a resource to debunk transphobic arguments. That's the main takeaway, and that's why I'm talking about this. Now, the video may be deleted because, again, I'm sharing these clips and Apple TV, HBO, they don't necessarily like fair use. But either way, I, I just, I had to say it because these segments are game changers in my opinion, and I don't believe that that's hyperbolic.